We often have output from commands that are multi-part and we want single part. We talked about that earlier here. We had this lakes buffer that we got from buffering these lakes. And if I right click and look at the table, I see that I have basically one row for all these polygons. There's a many to one relationships or multiple parts pointing to this one row. And if I calculate areas, it's the aggregate area. Well, I don't want that. So I go ahead to the tools and in the toolbox, I can look then for a multi-part to single part tool. Now I know here that it's down in the data management tools in the feature tools down about halfway in this multi-part to single part. But if I didn't know that, I could remember that there's this search box. And if I type in multi or single or something like that, I get a list of tools. And here is the multi-part to single part. So I can, again, double left click on that. And I can specify my input features, in this case, the lakes buffer. And then my output features, I want to make sure I save it in, in some place that I know this is just an example. And I'll call this MP to SP. Um, and then I run it. Now this runs fairly quickly and I get a new data layer. And if I look at that new data layer here, I've um, run it before and done it in a different color for speed. I can see that here I have in this multi-part to single part conversion. And if I right click and look at its attribute table now, I have a bunch of entries, one for each of the polygons. So if I go ahead and do some calculation, it'll be on a polygon by polygon basis. If I calculate the area, it'll be the area of each of these individual polygons. It's quite useful, especially for a lot of these overlay or erase or other operations where the output is a multi-part shape. Now you often don't know and you have to find out whether it creates multi or single part through the documentation and then just remember. But in this case, we'll tell you in the lab when that's true.